Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I've decided to not do the book review because something really awesome came up that uh, I want to thank the guys over at Weekly Manga Recap for bringing to my attention. The Shonen Jump Manga Awards competition, Shonen Jump Manga competition, um, it's an uh, amateur competition. They've got six entrants, and uh, they're, they're just a quick one-shot. You can read them, and you can vote. It's the 45th time they've done this, apparently. And, yeah, this is pretty cool. I mean, it's always nice to be on the cutting edge of who's going to be the next big thing. And uh, so I'm going to do a quick overview of the six mangas and uh, which ones I liked and which ones I didn't. If you're afraid that I'm going to influence your opinion, uh, which is a completely legitimate thing to be afraid of, it's really hard to keep your own opinion once you've heard someone else's, uh, go ahead and check them out first. I'll have a link in the description to this site. And uh, I'm going to give you a quick tip. When you click the read button, you're going to get uh, this, um, I don't know, kind of Adobe-like thing. When you go, But the problem is that the initial format is really tiny. Like, it's really hard to actually read what the comics are saying, the mangas. So what you want to do is you want to click on the gears, and there's going to come up a bunch of options, but they're all in Japanese. The top option, the very first option, uh, is the zoom-in capability. Uh, you can either see two pages at once or one page at a time. And uh, one page at a time is on the left, so click the left button to get an idea. Because uh, one of them in particular is really almost impossible to read in the uh, two-page spread format. It's just way too tiny. So, with that out of the way, let me uh, start with Sweat Man by Fei Zhu Zhuan from Taiwan. It's a superhero, doesn't really know he has a superpower kind of story. He's a boy who, for his entire life, has just sweat profusely. Just way too much sweat. It doesn't stink. The manga makes very clear that his sweat is not disagreeable, except for the fact that it secretes from his body. And he eventually uh, manages to go into a workout routine, make himself thinner, and hoping that'll stop the sweating. It doesn't. But he's doing everything he can to hide the sweating so he can have a normal life. Unfortunately, he gets waylaid at his new school by some creepy weird nerd guy who runs the club for superpower research. And you can see where this is going. He's going to avoid getting roped up into this club. Something will bring them together and he'll eventually learn his true powers. And that's not uh, particularly original, but you can do good things with that. There can be a lot of jokes had there, and his power isn't awful. Sweat coming from his butt. Essentially, don't think of it as sweat. Think of it as perfectly accessible water pumps at any point in his body. So if you try and punch him, he pumps water from his face, and your fist gets repelled. He can skate along the ground. He can fly into the air. He can fire fire hoses at you with his hands. Um... I don't know why it had to be sweat. I, I, it's a joke manga, so that's why it's sweat. But shooting water from your palms is a pretty cool power all by itself. I think it could have been handled a little better than this, because this isn't very good. It's not horrible by any means, but the unfortunate fact of the matter is it's too jokey. The Especially the um, nerd character is just... He teleports. I swear he teleports. And he does that thing that Droopy would do in his old cartoons where he would always catch up to the guy, no matter how improbable that would be. And, yeah, that's funny, but it also tries to have its cake and eat it, too. It tries to be serious at points with some completely over-the-top bully characters, and it just doesn't work. And the humor doesn't really hit well. Um, and there was a gay joke that made me uncomfortable. Um, that's not to say I don't think you can't make gay jokes in manga, but this one felt... Uh, the, the... It was being used as blackmail material, which I didn't really like. But, um... It, it's not the worst thing I've ever read. It's just not that good. Okay, the next one is Golden Rabbit by Nick Canoza from the United States, which I was really impressed by, especially when I saw the art style, because it's a pretty good approximation of what manga would look like as drawn by an American. Uh, this is, uh, I don't want to call it really a fairy tale, but it's about a boy who chases a leprechaun. That's pretty much the story and the action of the manga. Uh, the leprechaun for some reason looks like a rabbit, but everyone calls him a leprechaun. He has a pot of gold. 
He's sneaky. He's quick. He lives in the forest. So yeah, I'll, I'll go with it. It's a stylistic choice. Um, I call it kind of a fairy tale because in all honesty, there's no explanation given for why the leprechaun is around and why the boy is able to chase him day after day after day. That's that's what they've done. I think they're on like day 38 where they just spend all day. He has to catch him before sunset. If he does, he gets his pot of gold. And he can come back as many times as he wants, try and catch this guy, and they're have and you can tell they're having a lot of fun. They're bonding this way. The unfortunate fact of the matter is that the boy has a friend who's in the hospital because her legs are injured. It's not very clear what it is, but they need they could use an operation to work again and they just don't have the money. That's why he's trying to catch the leprechaun. And I'm not going to spoil it or anything, but it's a happy ending, and I don't really see where this could go. Like, one, this is a Shonen Jump Award, so your hope is to create a series out of a Shonen series. And, you know, there have been Shonen series that didn't seem like they could hold a series that held a series for a little while. This one doesn't seem like it could hold a series for very long at all. This one feels very much like a one-shot only, but it's a well-written one-shot. It's funny, it's endearing, it's heartwarming, and I give the person a lot of credit. I would like to see other stuff from them. Alright, the next one is Morning Star by Aitor Holgado from Spain. Um, one thing that I will eventually get to is the strange crossover in Hispanic society with Japanese society. I'll get to that someday. Probably in... Mon um, okay, I can't remember the name of the manga right now off the top of my head. Anyway, Morning Star is fantasy kind of story. There's not, there's simultaneously not enough background and way too much background material in this manga. But the basic plot of the manga we have is two treasure hunters go into a treasure cave vault looking for treasure. That's what they do. And it turns out this was the tomb of a pretty powerful wizard guy, so there's more security on the tomb than usual. I mean, they, they ran into some uh, undead creatures, walking skeletons, but apparently they run into those in a lot of other caves. But then they run into giant undead monsters. And uh, to the manga's credit, it's got pretty good fight choreography. Uh, no special powers, as it were. They just used hand-to-hand -hand weapons. But uh, because of that, they had to be a little clever in order to defeat the giant ones. So I give it points. It had pretty good fight choreography. The art style is probably the most detailed of all the entrants, which I don't know what their time frame was to work on this, but it's pretty impressive how good it looks. Unfortunately, this person is not a particularly good writer. It's not to say that there isn't a story here or that the characters are poorly developed. The problem is, is that there's too much exposition. There's too much just talking to... As you well know, this was the tomb of the great Lord Denethor, who ruled the kingdom of Brathen 700 years ago. It's that whole thing that they do in sci-fi, as you know, where they're clearly explaining to the audience, and there's a lot of text, and it's just... it's clunky. It's really clunky storytelling. It's exposition drop. And it's... I feel that this person could become really good, but at the moment they're going to need someone to give them advice on writing. So Morningstar, I'm just going to have to say no. It's not good enough yet, but there's a lot of potential there. Next one is Boom by Dokoro from China. I probably mispronounced that one. Uh, this one is a comedy action bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it, it really plays up the comedy in the same kind of way that Sweatman did, but unlike Sweatman, it actually does it right. See, at no point do we really take anything seriously. The art style is loose, and uh, gags are a many, but at no point does it ask you to take it seriously. You're just supposed to be along for the ride. Yeah, in the manga, they have trials and tribulations they have to overcome, but... We're just laughing at them, trying to overcome them in their silly, silly, jokey way. The story is that this guy is a lover of bombs, and he works for the bomb squad of some really poorly defined future city kind of thing. Uh, that's not really... Th there's very little understanding of what world this takes place in. 
but he loves bombs, and he gets blamed for this giant bomb that shows up in the city. Despite the fact that he was on the bomb squad, at the scene, trying to fix the thing. And some, an entire female police squad, all female, they have some special name, but I can't remember what it is, show up and arrest him, and he's not okay with that, uh, because that bomb in the middle of the city is utter crap in comparison to his masterful bomb-making skills. Now, giving your main character the ability to use bombs as their primary weapon is, first of all, something I really like the idea of, but this manga doesn't do it the way I would like to see it. See, he believes that bombs are for entertainment, since gunpowder was originally for fireworks, and... Yeah, that's a good way to get around having your character use things that are explicitly designed to kill people. He uses, well, if I'm being honest, he uses magic bombs. Bombs that do things that require an enormous suspension of disbelief to the, only, to the point that I can only claim them as magic. He drops a bomb that blows all the clothes off the female officers except for their panties. Yeah, it's that kind of manga. And... These, uh, I, I don't know, the, the cheesecake is handled well, at least. It's mostly, look, I blew their clothes off, ha ha, that's funny, rather than, look, I blew their clothes off, now let's ogle these girls. I mean, they stay naked, but that's just because they wouldn't really have a spare change of clothes with them. Um, as I said, the art style is really flowing and loose, so I, it's hard to find these characters attractive in any way. It's really hard to take them seriously. And he's the, and the, the hero's the usual kind of super genius, able to do one thing so incredibly well that he leverages it into being awesome at anything. He can apparently disarm a bomb by catching it. Um, this isn't the best work, but it's good. Uh, it definitely would work turned into a series. Uh, I don't, it... It reminds me of Sora Log, or um, Sora Lock, which is a really jokey manga about a locksmith, and they somehow turn him into a pseudo action hero, with o his only skill being locksmithing. It really reminds me of that, just in the way it jokes and handles this one power and leverages it into everything. It's okay, but I would be surprised if it won. The next one is The Team Before Daybreak by Yu Yanshu from China, again. Uh, now that I look, there's really nobody from Japan here, interestingly enough. Uh, this one is... Oh, it, uh, lost Potential? Too generic? I don't know. It's about a vampire who's in the army. It looks to be about World War I times... And it doesn't really... It, he's in the army because he likes to drink blood, and on battlefields, he gets a lot of blood. And the military was like, well, we can leverage this into a useful weapon, right? And most of the manga is just... It's not really all that action-packed. I mean, yeah, there's some action. There's some pretty decent uh, large-scale battle scenes. The art's pretty good. But it's mostly just the vampire guy talking to himself about how... He can no longer relate to humans, how he only treats them as vessels of blood, and how he can no longer go home because he's become a vampire. It's pretty standard vampire, not as awesome as it sounds stuff. But it just kind of falls apart because the story doesn't really do anything new with this vampire isn't as great as it sounds story. He... He has a support squad of army people who transport him from battle to battle in a coffin. And one at one point they get ambushed and his entire squad, who he had zero respect for, sacrifice themselves to save him. And they make a literal wall of corpses on top of his uh, casket. Uh, and he then saves the one unreasonably busty girl from dying by turning her into a vampire and realizes that maybe humans aren't so worthless in the end. And it's just... I don't know. When we have things like Helsing, where you see a vampire who really embraces the insanity, and then you see this guy who just goes with it because he doesn't want to hurt anymore, it doesn't really... It, it, it's just not a story I'm interested in hearing. It's well drawn. It's not necessarily poorly told. It's got pretty good pacing. It's just, I don't... There's nothing in this story that interests me in the least. So, I'm sorry, but it's just... 
it, it was a flawed concept at its base, but it's a well-executed flawed concept. The last one is El Viento del Norte from New Zai in Taiwan. Uh, this one's my favorite, um, not because the main hero is a large-boobed woman. Uh, probably because it's a western. That's probably why I like this one. Um, it, it, think of it in the same way, why do people in the United States love Cowboy Bebop so much? Because it's, it's more personal to us than more Japanese things. But this story follows a cowboy girl, or a cowgirl wandering some alternate fiction wet old west town. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's futuristic, though. It does not like uh, Vash the Stampede, whatever. Trigon, Trigon. Not like Trigon. It doesn't feel like that. It feels like it's going for the more real, uh, authentic old west feel rather than the futury old west feel. But our hero uses a Japanese samurai sword as her weapon, rather than, say, a gun. And yeah, that uh, <laughs> she shows up in a town where the police have are running a protection racket and terrorize civilians, and she shows up at a bar where someone was getting hassled and interrupts the hassling to order some milk. Uh, this is... All absolutely hilarious in the same way that someone just utterly ignoring the holdup going on five feet away, and then the criminals are just like, are you ignoring us? How are you ignoring us? We're holding a knife to this person. Why are you... It, it, it's that kind of funny. Uh, the barmaid at the hotel... Um, oh, at the saloon, not the hotel. We're going to the authentic western feel. The barmaid at the saloon... Uh, gets saved by her because, of course, the criminal is, uh, his ego is hurt by the fact that he's getting ignored, so he pulls his gun on her, and she pulls her sword on him, and it goes her way immediately, because in what story does the sword not beat the, uh, gun when we're talking about fantasy fiction? I mean, yeah, okay, that's why in real life it went the complete opposite direction. It's a fantasy but, so she saves the barmaid, the barmaid gets really clingy in a pretty hilarious, but not at all lesbian way. And then, of course, the uh, police officer shows up, he's got this special technique where he can fire two bullets at once, uh, from one gun. If you did it from two guns, that'd be far less impressive. And our hero has to reveal the fact that her eye patch was covering this other eye that essentially sees things at way faster pace, way more detail. She has eagle eyes. And we have a neat little flashback to a, a legit Native American explaining how the eye works. It's so rare to see Native Americans in manga that are like real ones, real ones, not people just affecting the look for a joke. Uh, she saves the town, beats the guy, cuts his belt off, doesn't, like, slice him in half. It's all PG violence. And uh, then she just moves on to the next town. And it it just feels like something that would really easily build into a really solid shonen series. It's uh, a little cheesecakey at times, but nothing too bad. I, and it helps that since the main heroine is, a, you know, it's a girl... There's not a lot of male gaze going on, but there's a bit of it, and uh, I, I, I try not to complain too much when someone obviously shows restraint and they're mostly doing it because that's the audience they're in, but I would like to see it mostly wiped out. But uh, yeah, El Viento del Norte is personally my favorite. It's uh, the most shonen -y of them all, in all honesty. Uh, apart from Sweatman, but Sweatman was just way too jokey for me to work with. So that's the breakdown of the Shonen Manga Awards competition. Uh, I've got the link in the description, and you can go read and vote for yourself. And uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye.